Okay, so we're going to talk about lines, and we have two lines, and then applications. And we're going to look at lines in three dimensions. And so let's take a look at this picture here that I have. Here is a line kind of floating through space. It's a blue line, and I can see it's, it's there when I play with it a little bit. The black thing on the edges are just to give it a perspective of where it is relative to this kind of like cube, which defines our space. And so there's lots of different ways, four different ways actually that lines can intersect. And the first one that I can have is they can be parallel. And as you see here, these lines are parallel. They never touch. What's similar about them is they have equal direction vectors, scalar multiples of direction vectors, but no points in common. So that's one scenario that we can have. We can have the lines be parallel. The next one that we can have is we can have the same line. And so I can't see it because it's the same line one. But the direction vector might look just a, a scalar multiple of this, but the point could look very different. Even the point for parallel, it could look very different as well. So same line is uh, just, it intersects in an infinite amount of points that are the same. And that is same line or coincident, coincident, which means it's, it's the same line. The next option we have available to us is what we call skew lines. And if you look really carefully, those lines do not intersect. Right there, you can see that they don't. And yet they are not parallel. That's an aspect of three dimensions, what that can happen. Well, in two dimensions, if they're parallel, they don't intersect. All the other times, they do. But in three dimensions, they can also be skew, which means non-parallel and non intersecting. And finally, the last one that it can be is when they do actually intersect at a point. And that is an intersection. They intersect at a point. So there's four different ways that lines can interact. Let's take a look at some examples here. So here is a line. Of these lines, one of them is parallel, one is skew, one is coincidence, and one is intersecting. In order to find that we're going to break them into two groups, we're going to look for parallel lines, which means we want to have scalar multiples of this. Well, this is scalar multiple. Three double times in by two, I get this one. This is also a scalar multiple. These two directions are not. And so these two could be parallel. These could be the parallel. Well, they are parallel, but one could be coincident and one is not. The only way to find out is to see if one of these points is on the line. If one point is on the line, then all the points are be are because the lines are parallel. So to do it, I'm going to take a point like 10 to negative 50 and see if it is on this line. So it's 10 is equal to 15 plus 3t. 5 negative is equal to 3t. t is equal to negative 5 over 3. I'm going to do the same thing for the y value. Plug it in here. And if t is equal to the same thing, and I'll have to check it for the last value, but then it looks more and more promising that it, they will be coincident. So 2 is equal to 29 plus 8t. Negative 27 is equal to 8t. And so dividing by 8, t does not equal negative 5 thirds. So that means that this top line, this top one, it is just parallel because it shares no points in common by testing this point into this equation. 
So by elimination, I know the next one has to be coincident, but let's take a point. We'll take this point and let's find out for sure. So it's 18 is equal to 15 plus 3t. 3 is equal to 3t. t equals 1. Plug 37. For the y, 37 is 29 plus 8t. Subtract this, I get 8 is equal to 8t. t is equal to 1. Again, looks really good. The t is the same. Finally, we'll check the 0 in here. Well, 0 is equal to 5 minus 5t. Here again, I can see that t is 1. And so, because this one point is on this line, and they're parallel, every point on this line is also on this line. So they are coincident. All right, so the last two equations, which have the direction vectors in blue, one is going to be skew, and one is going to be intersecting. And we don't, if, they are intersecting, only one point of this equation will be on this equation. And we have to find that point. And so one of the easiest things for me to do is to set them equally to each other. Okay, so I will set them equal to each other. I know that the x of, oh, I'm going to go to blue since these are the blue ones. I know that x, which is 15 plus 3t, equals this x value, 8 plus, and I'm going to make this p, since all my s's look like 5, 3p. And so if I rearrange this equation, I can say that 7 is equal to 3p minus 3t. Here is one equation with two unknowns. Then I'm going to go to my y-coordinate. I'm going to say that 29 plus 8t is equal to negative 9 minus 16p. Rearranging this one, adding 9 gives me 38 is equal to negative 16p minus 18. This is my second equation, this is the y value, the y. And fine with the z, I know that 5 plus, or 5 minus 5t is equal to 10, 10 plus 7p. Rearranging again, I know that negative 5 is equal to 7p plus 5t. Here's three equations, only two unknowns. And so I'm going to choose two of the equations, solve for p and t, and then I have to check it in the third one and see if it's a true statement. If p and t are equal for all of them, or produces equal equations for all of them, then I know it is intersecting. And I can choose that P or T will produce the point of intersection. The easiest way to solve this is with my calculator. I'm going to go to my apps, and I want poly simultaneous. And I want my simultaneous equations, two equations, two unknowns, and I'm going to go 3 minus 3, 7, uh, negative 16, negative 8, and 38. Solve it. There is my solution for P and T. So I know then that P and T, or these ugly, ugly, Fractions negative 20. Uh, let's see if I can steal the screen. There we go. I know that p is equal to negative 29 over 36 and negative 113 over 36. But what I can also do if I go to my calculator 
is I can change, make my system. Uh, let's go back. Let's go to our mode and change it to three equations and two unknowns. Adding all these values in three minus three seven and I'm going to put x y and z in negative 16 negative 8 38 7 5 minus 5 and if I get an answer then I know p and t are the same for all the equations if I get no solution there's no solution that means there is no P and T that satisfies all three. Therefore, this one here is skew. I know that this equation is skew since there's no solution. And so I can erase that part and say that this one here is skew. And finally, if I want to find the intersection I know by elimination that these are all the same, and this one has to be intersection. I'm going to make this Q. If I set up my equations again, 15 plus 3T is equal to 12 plus 2Q. And to, if I simplify that, excuse me, I get 3 is equal to 2q minus 3t moving to the y value I can say that 29 is e oh 29 plus 8t is equal to 21 plus 8q so that means 8 is equal to 8q minus 8 t or 1 is equal to q minus t and then finally the z value I know that 5 minus 5 t is equal to 10 plus 10 q which gives me minus 5 is equal to 10 q plus 5 T or rather minus 1 equal to 2Q plus T. And so here are my three equations with two unknowns. If I call my calculator back, here's the first equation. And turn it in. Go to my mode. Next. I'm going to clear it so I have 2 negative 3 3 1 negative 1 1 and finally 2 1 negative 1 solve it and this time I get nice values where I know that Q is equal to 0 and T is equal to 1 so if I take q equals 0 and plug it in here, x is equal to 12, y is equal to 21, and z is equal to 10. That is my point of intersection of those two. Similarly, if I made t equal to 1, I get 18. Oh, sorry, t is equal to negative 1. If t is negative 1, I get 12. 28 minus 8 is 21. 5 plus 5 is 10, which is indeed the same as down here. And so by analyzing the direction vectors first and then the starting points, we can determine if all these lines are parallel, coincident, skew or intersecting.